Okay, now I'm working on these preparation things. Preparing for good solid communion. From, from, a, from a guy, from a dad perspective. From a male leader perspective who wants to call other male leaders together to care for these women and children. So, the first... <laughs> I came up with a cool thing to the guy. The reasons why you would not want to support or team up with me or be on a team with me. The things, the reasons why you would not want to be hanging out with me. And this is the essence of um, discerning the unclean spirits that are still in a man's atmosphere after salvation. Jesus does not promise this like total freedom from trouble but rather the ability to stand strong <laughs> in, in the nasty battle. He promises persecution and troubles from the inside, from the self, from the flesh, and from the people in your atmosphere. you got to watch out who you're associating with. And from the invisible spirit realm. Those are the three battle areas. That's part of the Apostles' teaching. That's a top-shelf reality of the apostles teaching you were formed in a certain way you were raised in a certain type of childhood and that actually causes your strong spirit associations so you are actually associated with some unclean spirits that actually make you feel good make you feel safe if a spirit comes in connection with your soul sometimes you feel stronger and bigger than your opposing forces and those spirits, actually, you feel like it's part of you when it's actually a spirit that got into your atmosphere because of trauma in your youth or bad parenting or lack of understanding and you keep making the same mistakes over and over again and they love that and like, wow, they love to make that, that mistake or that self-destructive behavior. We'll just ride on this. We'll just make them think that this is part of their personality when it ain't. <laughs> <laughs> That's why the what would Jesus do question really is helpful sometimes. So then the reason why I'm making this recording is because th this catheter that, that there's, you know, there's a slit in my chest and there's this tube that goes straight in to my heart um, arteries and, and valves and stuff. Not, not valves, but this catheter goes straight into me and there's these two plastic tubes here and they hook that up to the machine this is the reality of my life it's not like just easy you know like that I mean there's some serious stuff going on because of my ignorance and because of a lack of true ecclesia I would not have this thing on me if I had been brought into baptism into family honesty and communion with men first who are admitting the problems of arousal, the problems of laziness, the problems of not taking care of their family properly, the problems of not focusing on their spouse in a way where the spouse is delighted and blessed because this is part of the life of the man is to be good cheer, to fill his wife with good cheer. So I'm, I'm doing this presentation this way to help you stay sober that like I ain't playing games man this this crap right here it's a it's a help I mean they're keeping me alive if I lived in Haiti or Congo I would not next be able to sit next to a machine that kept me alive so anyhow <laughs> so here I am in this state where I have to go sit next to a machine for 15 hours a week plus the travel time which ends up making it like 20 hours a week it's like a part-time job and they made these operations on my 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 arm there's all this stuff going on they have to poke needles in me I'm gonna take this catheter out and then they're gonna do the needle process which is actually safer I can't be with because this thing's on me Bathing is really uncomfortable and difficult. I can't just dive in the shower and rinse off because I gotta protect this. 
and I can't just dive in the water and swim and surf, you know, so when I get this, this fistula thing fixed up, they're going to stab needles into me three times a week, which is safer because the, the needle holes heal up and, you know, it's, it's a better thing. But I mean, none of it's fun. And God has said to me, I will, I will heal your kidneys through riding the bicycle. And that's another whole story. If you're a person that wants to stand with me and support me, you know, tell me, you know, I want to team up because you can begin, you know, doing some of the research on this books. I mean, I mean, just the study, just the study called all the sex stuff in the Bible is so interesting and fun. And God said to me years ago, I mean, years ago, he said, if you do a study called all the sex stuff in the Bible, and give it to young people, they will be able to chit chat and talk about what they're going through and they will be saved and protected from so many demonic strongholds. Just studying this word, this topical study in the world, word, all the sex stuff in the Bible will actually cause unclean spirits in the sex and relationship department to back off. And I need help with this. I need to like, you know, put this together, pop up some Greek, Greek word, understanding things. I mean, it's like like a whole book, okay? And then, I mean, there's a lot of other books. There's like, you know, the apostles' teaching, this one thing about the teachings. There's one term that God has used in different ways, and he likes to hide things so that only the wise and the seeking ones can bring them up. These terms, the apostles' teaching, the way of life principles of Christ, the way of life teachings of the Son of God for a new covenant, the principles of the gospel that we have to be obedient to. This list of teachings is not outlined in the New Testament. It is the oral church tradition. It's what we're supposed to be teaching one another, family to family, group to group. Teach them all the things that I teach them to obey or follow all the meats vote, all the wonderful goodies, all the treats that I gave you. You know the word meats vote, <laughs> mitzvah in Hebrew? It means both a treat like a piece of candy that you give somebody or a good deed that you do for somebody, but it also means a teaching or a command that truly benefits you. So it, the 10 meets vote is the 10 treats from God. The 10 commandments, the 10 meets vote. It is a complex word that is so cool to try to describe in English because it has this range of giving you your favorite piece of candy, a York peppermint patty, or giving a command that if you don't follow it, you might die. It's the same, it's the same term, mitzvah. <laughs> I mean, I didn't even know that. It blew my mind. I'm like, I thought this was going to be boring. It's poetic and wonderful. It's amazing. Wow. So, I mean, I literally need team now. I mean, I'm talking about throw your stuff in a short storage closet, get to where I am, and you'll start receiving profits and benefits because one of our primary focuses is... We want to pe people to understand how to start good little family businesses that really have some cash flow, you know, that can really cover some bills. And we can all work together with our hands and do things and build stuff and create things and, you know, clean and raise food and um, landscape and fix houses and, and do lunch truck and all that kind of stuff. This is, this is that's like a whole spearhead of you know the grandpa honesty guy reality um but the two primary things are restoring true ecclesia which is honesty in the home and then communion and then actually asking the holy spirit what we should do are we in the right job do you want us in a different place who should be we be going to outreach who who, who do we need to go and love one today where do we need to go to find a person that's hurting that's true ecclesia non-stop coming out of the home a cluster of people in the home yes you can go to the big box box worship centers and you can support them and you can do things with them but the main thing is your the maintenance of your soul your own personal soul 
must be with regular honesty times and communion, which I've never had, and it's why I'm still stuck in some just like, you know, dumb habits, okay, which God promises will go away when I've got Ecclesia established. Okay, so true Ecclesia and the Apostles' teachings. These two things are big, really important things that no one has ever presented to me regularly. Not any of my favorite teachers. Not any of the people that I deeply respect. Derek Prince, Bill Johnson, da-da-da-da-da. You know, Smith Wigglesworth, D.L. Moody, Charles Spurgeon. Oswald Chambers, and all of you know, my favorite teachers that have been close to me, you know, even Andrew McDonald Graham. All these people have not been teaching and pressing in on true Ecclesia and what it is day to day, and you know, what it was in the first 300 years, and the Apostles' teaching, or the way of life teachings, or the things in, of the gospel to be obedient to, or the teachings of Christ for the New Covenant. These are serious things. And people have forgotten the eldership of the first Christians and how important they are. Thank you, David Berceau. Thank you, Deborah Berceau. And Isaiah Berceau, prepare to rise up, man. You are, you are warrior team.